Hi, my name is Carl Marn and I'm the product manager of MetaShell. In this video, I will show you how MetaShell works in Microsoft Teams. I will, however, start with a few slides. The agenda is that first, I will give you an introduction to Microsoft Teams. Thereafter, I will tell you a little bit about some of the life cycles in Teams. Then I will present some guidelines that many of our clients use when deciding where to store their documents in Office 365. Lastly, I will be showing you a demo of how MetaShare works in Teams. Microsoft Teams is Microsoft's application with the quickest market growth, and it acts as a hub for teamwork in Office 365. The fundamentals of Microsoft Teams is to be able to collaborate efficiently with your colleagues and internal users. In Teams, you can chat with your colleagues, you can call them with or without video and screen sharing, and you can collaborate with a group of people in one or several Teams and channels. In each of these channels, you have a tab where you can post uh, create posts and conversate with all the members of the team. And you have a files tab where you can upload documents and share them with the team. On top of this, you can customize your channels to have one or more additional tabs presenting information from basically any source. As you can see in this diagram, MetaShare is one of these information sources together with Planner, OneNote, Tasks, Outlook, and so on. On this slide, we present some of the life cycles in Microsoft Teams. When you create a team, a SharePoint site is automatically created with a document library to store its documents. When you create the channel, a folder is created within the site's document library. All documents that are uploaded to a channel are stored in this document library. When you attach a document in a conversation, the document is automatically stored in the channels document folder, that is the channels files tab. When you delete a team, the team's SharePoint site will be deleted. When you delete the channel, the channels document folder is deleted. So basically, if some or all of your documents need to be preserved, they should not be stored in the Files tab unless you create a retention policy that preserves these documents in an archive. Based our, on our customers' requests, we have created these guidelines how to work with documents in Office 365. What primarily sets the rules for where documents should be stored is whether or not the documents need to be preserved for a longer period of time either out of regulatory requirements or out of knowledge management perspective. On the left-hand side, we have the individual's personal documents. These documents can, without any issue, be stored in the individual's OneDrive, and when needed, they can be shared with others. Then we have the situation when one or more individuals and teams need to collaborate on documents. This is when Microsoft Teams should be used. Ad hoc collaboration normally do not create documents that need to be preserved, and therefore a regular team without MetaShare for document management is enough. When you, however, have long-term types of collaboration in different teams within your company, then these teams should be complemented with MetaShare so that the day that these teams and their channels are deleted, the documents will be still be preserved. Finally, all other types of documents that need to be preserved should be stored in MetaShare. This is how a standard channels files tab looks like. You can add files to the channel, open and edit files, and they are presented in a basic standard view. The view can be customized to show you metadata. You are not able to set metadata on these documents. Any document that is uploaded to the Files tab 
will be without metadata. You neither have any possibility to easily search or filter your documents. This is how MetaShare can look like inside the channels tab. In this tab, users can easily search and filter for documents. When MetaShare is embedded in a tab, you have the option to either keep the filter zone in the left navigation area or remove it. You can also remove MetaShare's top frame, which you see in this on the next page. If you upload documents into a MetaShare tab, you will always be asked to fill in your metadata, making it easier to comply with the company's information management policy, as you see on this screen. So that was the slides. Now to the demonstration. Here you have a MetaShare workspace. If you haven't seen any of the other MetaShare videos, I will quickly show you how to find and work with documents in MetaShare. On the left-hand side of the page, you find the document filters that are configured to be shown in this workspace. These filters are just examples, and you can easily define the filters that you want to use in your organization. On the main part of the page, you find a list of all the documents, where the latest modified documents are shown on the top of the list. Information about the documents are shown in columns. In this case, we see area, document type, keyword, and company, as well as the document's version, when they latest were modified, and by whom. There are many documents in this workspace, so to find a specific document, I can either search for the document or I can use MetaShare's intuitive filtering technique. I will here show you how to filter for documents and will do it by filtering on sales related agreements. You can filter the documents either by opening one of the filters on the left navigation area and thereafter click and select the value like I'm doing in this case with a filter called area. Once it is opened, you will see the different values to select between. In this case, I select sales area. The other method to filter on is by clicking on any of the document's clickable metadata values in the document list, like I'm doing in this case with the document type equal agreement. If I still have too many work documents, I can continue to filter on other dimensions, like in this case, keyword equal GDPR. Any selected filter will be indicated by the color of the filter. We now see that area, document type, and keywords have a dark blue color. Breadcrumbs on the top of the list. You can remove an applied filter by clicking on it. If more than one filter is applied, like in this case, a clear all filters button is shown to the right of the applied filter tags. A filter icon is shown to the left of the applied document filters columns. The URL of the page will also contain the document's filters, so it could be bookmarked for quicker access to these specific documents. I will now show you how to search for documents. First, I will clear the current filters by clicking on the Clear All Filters button. Write a search phrase in the search text box above the list, workspace list and press the enter key on the keyboard, like I do here with ACME agreement. A tag with a search phrase will be shown above the document list and any documents that have the phrase as part of the document's name or as part of any document metadata will be shown in the list. The URL will also contain the search phrase, so it could be bookmarked for quicker access in the future. Once you have found your documents, just click on its name to open it. 
Now I switch to Teams, where I've opened a channel in a regular team called Agreements. The start page for a channel is always the Posts tab, where all the channel's conversation are shown. The second tab shows the channel's files. I can here upload, create, read, and edit documents. I will show you what happens when I upload a document in the Files tab. As there is no way to manage metadata using the Files tab, I first need to select a folder and then upload to it. In this case, I'm, I've organized the, the files in this Files tab with what type of files they are. So I click on Words, Word Files. And then I open my File Explorer and I drag and drop a document into this folder. As you see, Teams does not ask me anything regarding metadata. I can neither mark a document to see or edit its metadata. Now I click on a tab called Agreements that is linked to a MetaShare workspace that is pre-filtered to only show sales agreements. If I now upload a new document, you see that MetaShare automatically asks the user to fill in metadata, which in this case already is pre-filled as this tab is configured for sales agreements. So the only thing I need to do is accept these uh, metadata and click Save. I'll now switch to another team called Company Wide. This team is a Teams enabled MetaShare workspace. So the Files tab shows me the documents that are stored in a MetaShare workspace. I switch back to MetaShare so you can see that it shows exactly the same documents. I just remove my filtering and these documents are exactly the same documents as I have presented on this files tab. If I upload the document to the files tab, you might think that the documents policy will force the user to fill in mandatory metadata, but this is not the case. Once a document is shown on the page, you see that it gets a tag indicating that it lacks metadata. I can, however, not see the metadata from Teams. If I now switch to the channel's Sales Agreements tab, which is a MetaShare tab, you will see that I get a notification that there is a document in the workspace that lacks metadata. I click on it and set the metadata for this document. Area, sales, document type, agreement, and click Save. Now this document complies to the information policy set within this workspace. This is the last part of the demonstration. I will go back to my presentation and show you a few more slides. On this page, we list some recommendations regarding Microsoft Teams. It's very important to have a clear purpose for the teams and channels that, you, that are created. Else you will end up having a jungle of teams and channels. And the risk is that your users will get only get more confused than they pre previously were. If you have not started using teams yet, a recommendation is to first plan which teams and channels to create. Create a team to control permissions to the information in that team. And then create a channel to differentiate different informations within the same team. 
limit the possibility for the end users to create new teams and channels and to create meta shared tabs in the team's channels filtered on the channel's content with these advantages. Documents that are uploaded or created in a meta shared tab will be tagged with metadata. You can easier find documents in the tab by using a combination of search and filters. When a team or a channel eventually is deleted, its documents will not be deleted. These will still live in the MetaShare workspace that you've connected to the team's channel. The disadvantage is that users will have two options to upload the documents, to the Files tab and to the MetaShare tab. Our recommendation is to only use the Files tab for temporary documents, and as soon as the documents are of more qualified nature, they should be stored in the MetaShare tab. Thank you for taking your time to see this video. I hope that I have managed to show you how easy it is to work with your documents when you integrate MetaShare in Microsoft Teams. Please take your time to look at some of the other MetaShare videos available on metashare.com. If you'd like to ask me anything regarding MetaShare, please do not hesitate to contact me. Here you have my contact details.